For many of us, the most dangerous thing we do every day is drive a vehicle. Road accidents are often followed by legal action, all on top of the trauma of being involved in an accident in the first place. The law says that as the driver, you are as responsible for your vehicle's roadworthiness as your employer. In other words, you could be fined and have your license endorsed or removed. And the most serious offences carry prison sentences. All vehicle users and operators have a duty of care to ensure that the vehicles are properly maintained and fit for use on the road at all times. We carry out regular roadside checks on all classes of road vehicle. If the defect is serious enough, we can actually prevent the vehicle is being used further on the road immediately. Ultimately, it can also end up in prosecution for the driver and the vehicle owner. It's always easy in hindsight to say, well, I wish I'd checked that before I had an accident, and that's the worst thing that can happen. Ultimately, somebody may be responsible for somebody dying. All vehicle operators should have a planned system of preventative maintenance and inspection. A crucial part of this is routine vehicle checks every time the vehicle is used, carried out by the driver. It only takes a few minutes, and remember, it is your responsibility. So carry out a routine check, even if you believe that the vehicle has already been driven and checked that day. The key elements of a daily walk around check, it can be simply carried out within five to 10 minutes and should be included as part of the driver's daily duties. Then there should be regular safety inspections, which are carried out by a competent person, i.e. an engineer. An MOT certificate only means that the vehicle has passed the uh, MOT criteria at that time. So it's essential that, you know, that there are other checks carried out other than just, you know, just relying on annual test. When using any vehicle for the first time, at the start of or during your shift, you should always carry out a short walk around check. This will help make sure that the vehicle is fit for the road and is equally important if the vehicle is borrowed or hired. Your company may have its own special rules and for more help and advice you should first talk to your manager. For the purposes of this film our driver will check three different vehicles a three and a half ton van, a three and a half ton drop side with trailer and a seven and a half ton tipper. Whatever your vehicle the same principles will apply and it's your responsibility to be fully aware of any special requirements. It doesn't necessarily matter which order you check items, but doing things methodically and keeping to a routine means you're less likely to miss anything. On approaching your vehicle, make sure that it's sitting square and not leaning to either side. Look underneath the front of the vehicle for any sign of fluid leaks, such as oil or coolant. The first checks to be carried out should be the engine oil and coolant level, and these must always be checked prior to starting the engine. While you're there, it's a good idea to carry out a visual check of the washer bottle, brake and clutch fluids. Next, get into the driver's seat. If you use a tachograph in your vehicle, as in our tipper, start using it as soon as you take over the vehicle. Turn on the engine and look for warnings. If a warning light stays on, don't ignore it. Report it. Check the wipers and washers. The horn, demisters, and temperature controls. Is there excessive play in the steering? Check the indicators, hazard warning lights, beacons, the instrument illumination, and of course the lights. If you have a workmate with you, they can assist you with checking the lights. If not, you could use reflective surfaces like mirrors or windows, or leave the lights on so you can check them as you go around. Indicate the right, yes. Does the park brake work properly? If the vehicle has air brakes like our tipper, check the system by depressing the foot brake and listening for leaks. <sighs> Using your mirrors, check for excessive exhaust smoke. Check the general condition of the cab interior, including items that could obscure your vision, obstructions in the footwell, and the condition of the pedal rubbers. Step out of the vehicle and, starting at the offside cab door, work your way from the offside in an anti-clockwise direction around the vehicle. As you go, check that items that should be there are there. Check that they're secure, in good condition, and that they work. At the front, check things like lights, bodywork, and bumpers. 
Also remember to check that your number plates and lights are clean. Then work your way around the wing and down the near side. Wheels and tyres are vital to the safety of your vehicle. Check that they're in good condition, that there are no bulges, abrasions or tears in the tyres. Look at the tread depth. The legal minimum is 1.6 millimetres for vans and 1 millimetre for larger vehicles. Do the tyres look underinflated? See if any wheel nuts are worn or loose. Look for signs of insecurity such as rust marks or other indications of wear. If wheel nut indicators are in use, check they're correctly aligned. Once you've checked the near side front wheel, continue down that side checking things along the way, like doors and the fuel cap. Make sure the seal is in good condition. Check for leaks. Different vehicles have different parts to look at. There may be a hydraulic reservoir to check. You may have a urea tank to look at. The vehicle may have drop sides or other movable panels and other bodywork features. Work your way around the rear and continue your check, making sure things are secure and in good condition. Are the loading doors and the access step secure? If you tow a trailer, then the vehicle and the trailer should be checked as a combination. In particular, look at the electrical connection, the tow bar and coupling, and the breakaway cable. Make sure the registration plate matches the vehicle and the lights are working correctly. The use of trailers can raise very specific issues, and you must understand these. For example, is the trailer compatible with the vehicle? Do you know how much it can carry and how to load it? Do you need an additional driving entitlement? If in doubt, always speak to your manager. Once you've finished at the rear, work your way back up the vehicle's offside, again checking all relevant items, and get back into the cab. Once there, set the vehicle's mirrors at the correct angle to maximise all-round vision to give a clear view of the road and other road users. Take a moment to ensure that you're comfortable in the vehicle before setting off. Are the seat belts in good working order? Your seating and steering position should be set to allow you maximum comfort, security and all-round observation to allow proper control of the vehicle. The important thing is to have a routine. Let's recap. First, check the oil and coolant. Next, sit at the driver's seat and check items in the cab. Then, beginning at the offside cab door, walk around the vehicle in an anti-clockwise direction. Throughout the check, ask yourself, is my vehicle safe and legal? You must now fill in any relevant forms. You may be required to do this even if there are no defects. Make sure any defects are notified in line with your organisation's instructions. Hi Cliff, back again. Got a defect on my vehicle. Routine vehicle checks are vital. So, always carry out a check every time you take over any vehicle. Follow a regular routine, that way you're less likely to miss anything. Record and report defects according to your employer's instructions. And remember, it's absolutely crucial to continue to monitor the roadworthiness of your vehicle as you drive. I think the most important thing that people should remember from this is that the role of the driver in carrying out his, his daily water round checks is going to safeguard his licence and his job and more importantly the safety of other road users.